Hey, thank you very much. This You're going to love this lovely. next piece. You're going to love this because this is right up the alley that you are just traveling on. Take it away. So oh. the pandemic, which has us spending a lot more time at home, has also discovered, has also led to the discovery of new hobbies, including the art of mixology. That's what I've been up to, Begno. <laughs> to appreciate the complexity of a well-made cocktail, you have to go back in time to understand its roots. And as we discovered, those roots lie in medicine, mystery, and mischief. Ooh. I know, I've got your attention. We visited a distillery in Brooklyn whose recipes draw from centuries-old tonics, including some that date back to the Black Plague. So this is where the magic happens. <laughs> we met 4th Ave Spirits co-founders Aaron Fox and Daniel Delanuez in their Brooklyn distillery, what they call their laboratory, where they test and produce a variety of botanical spirits. And over here we've got infusions of peaches and um, ground cherries. Infusion is a word you hear a lot around here, as the duo experiments with fruits, berries, roots, plants, and flowers to create one-of-a-kind liquors and spirits. The idea to start those experiments came about eight years ago over an after-dinner drink. Dad was kind of like, well, and how are these things made? And I was kind of like, oh. I don't know, there's a lot of mystery around it, a lot of secrecy. So I said, you know, it'd be fun to, to experiment. And I jumped up from the table and was like, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. <laughs> and so began their journey to unravel some of those mysteries, starting with understanding the history of herbal medicine's role in modern day spirits. Omari and aperitivi and these types of drinks were created by monks in, in the Middle Ages. So you'd go into, what was then a pharmacy. This would be a cure-all for this, this would be a cure-all for that. In their modern-day medicine cabinet of spirits, an Amaro they call Marseille, the bitter liqueur is often used as a centerpiece of before and after dinner cocktails. The aperitif and the digestif are very specific. I think the interesting thing is that, you know, with the digestivo going from herbal medicine, going into culinary culture, is that it does help you digest physiologically. The aperitivo, the one you have before dinner, does the same. It'll make you hungry. It brings on the appetite. People would have been drinking it in Marseille specifically. Yeah, and in Toulouse as well, and uh, and not as an enjoyable thing, really, as a you know, as a, as a medicinal. Tonic. As a medicinal thing. Yeah. So so it's later where you know, in our case, we take out the vinegar and take out the garlic. Its recipe is rooted in medieval legend, as the bubonic plague ravaged France. Four thieves, who were believed to have concocted a cure for the disease, were caught stealing from victims. They'd be punished unless they shared their secret recipe known as Vinegar of Four Thieves, or Marseille wine. There's a historical figure named uh, Richard Forthave. It's quite possible that it was that it was his concoction um, that through, you know, kind of the telling and retelling became Four Thieves instead of uh, Forthave, his name. Forthave, a 15th century doctor, is the namesake of their company, and its logo, a plague mask hand-drawn by Aaron, illustrates a familiar sight from a much different time. In the history of that, uh, the mask that's on the, the front of our label of the, the MRO named after Marseille, and that being this um, kind of one of the earliest uses of masks that are now you know, that we're wearing right now. That we're wearing now and right. we see all over. And that was, this was a kind of long mask kind of shaped a bit like a bird's beak and would have been uh, stuffed with different botanicals. The plague doctors would get the oils on their skin, which would repel fleas and ticks. Sourcing their ingredients from centuries ago, Fourth Ave is just one of many distilleries of late capitalizing on the craft cocktail trend. What do you think of the trend that perhaps first started with food, where people are looking for fresh ingredients, there's a movement to farm to table ingredients, that now we're seeing a bit of that trend with cocktails. When the economic crash of 2008 hit, we saw cocktail um, creativity explode. And mm. probably with this recession, we're, we're already seeing online this whole new you know, canned cocktail beverages, um, this, this whole new economy bloom. Rachel Meyer is a botanist and assistant professor at University of California, Santa Cruz. She's also the co-author of the book, Botany at the Bar. It's part of like just being human. We've always had competitive feasting where we're always looking for the coolest, weirdest, wackiest, most delicious thing to be able to show off to our friends and sometimes our foes. And yet, often what's old, is new again. So this is a bottle that wouldn't be sold at a liquor shop or a wine shop. 
you would find it at an apothecary. This is sort of like a library. Yeah. What we want to do with Fourth Ave was really make, you know, age-worthy spirits. And hopefully in 40 years, people will be collecting this. You were asking me how I came across the story. I was intrigued when I saw a bottle of Fourth Ave with the plague mask. Given that we are in the midst of a pandemic, I thought that was really interesting. And when we started researching, my producer Vita and I, we realized that they came up with this concoction that was based on a medicine from the 15th century. Wow. That cool? That's so amazing. Yeah. And I've seen all of your mixology. So a lot of those photos were my cocktail creations. Exactly. Stuck in lockdown. That's what I was doing. By the way, a, f a couple of people have already sipped Coquito. <laughs> The record. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year, indeed.